So if you have a digital product and it's not selling, then I want you to know that you are not the only one who has this problem of their digital products failing to sell. In 2022, I started a digital product business and it was only this month that I crossed my first $1,000 in digital product sales. And following my journey and after having tested several different strategies, creating several different products and masterminding with some of the best minds in digital products and digital product marketing, I want to break down some of the reasons why I believe digital products do not sell. In this video, not only do I want to talk about why your digital products are not selling, but I'm also sharing what you can do to fix it. So if that's cool with you, then please stay tuned. Hey guys, my name is Dawn Marie and I'm here on this channel documenting my journey of starting a digital product business from scratch and I will not be using marketplaces like Creative Market or Etsy. Now, if you have a digital product and it's not selling or you're just getting started in in your digital product journey, then make sure to check the description box below for my 10 day action plan that takes you step by step over the next 10 days, everything that you need to do to come up with, launch and sell your digital product, no guesswork needed. I'm pretty much telling you what to do, when to do it and how, so you don't miss any of the crucial steps that you need to be doing, which I have used to reach my first $1,000 in digital product sales. So let's talk about why digital products do not sell. Now your digital product may not be selling because it doesn't help solve an annoying pain in people's lives. The biggest reasons why people buy digital products because it helps them save time. People are always looking for ways to save time in their busy lives. If your digital product streamlines processes, maybe you're selling tracking sheets or checklists, or your digital product makes tasks easier, so maybe you are selling spreadsheet templates or provides efficiency, it becomes more valuable to potential customers because they don't have to spend their own time coming up with these things themselves. Also, digital products sell because it also helps people save money. Saving money is a huge motivator for people, whether it helps them save costs, whether it's through discounts, budget optimization, or avoiding additional expenses. For example, you might provide an online course on how to DIY wedding decorations. I mean, think about the money that that person who's taking the course is saving themselves by having to buy these decorations when they can simply make it themselves. So it saves them money. Then of course, they will see your digital product as worthy of investment. And the most successful digital products often come from a clear understanding of a problem faced by your target audience. So if your product effectively solves a very specific pain point, it becomes a practical solution that people are willing to invest in. So if your digital product isn't selling, then see whether it ticks these three boxes. Does it save time? Does it save money? And does it solve a huge problem? And if it does, and it's still not selling, then the second reason why digital products do not sell is because there isn't a desperate need for it, right? There's a massive difference between whether your product provides a need or whether it's a nice to have, right? Something that people just want. And it's generally fair to say that people are more likely to invest in something they perceive as a need rather than a want. For example, a digital product that provides a solution to problems that impact people's effectiveness in doing something, their well being, or overall quality of life could really be a need. Whereas digital products addressing very serious pain points are more likely to be seen as necessary investments. Whereas if the product is just merely based on a desire or a want, the decision to buy is often influenced by whether the person can afford it, whether they see it as having a high value or whether there's an emotional connection with the product. So if they are emotionally connected with you and your brand. So once yes can lead to purchases, but it needs to, but it's needs that actually drive more urgent buying behaviors. So the key to turning wants into needs is showing your audience that the product, your digital product, 
not only fulfills a want, but also addresses an absolute need in their lives. So let's take a look at how, we, how I can show you this with an example. So let's say you are creating an online course on how to start organic vegetable gardening. Perhaps people have a general interest in gardening or they have a desire to grow their own food. I mean, but these things are just wants. They're not compelling enough to really encourage people to buy your online course. But here's how you can position it as a desperate need. You could talk about how organic gardening is important and making sure the user maintains a steady supply of fresh, healthy produce. You can position it as a solution for individuals who want greater control over their food, especially in times of uncertainty. You can also frame the course as a step towards living a sustainable lifestyle, or you can show how growing your own organic food can lead to significant cost savings over time, so it can reduce people's grocery bills. I mean, if people see that your course can help them save money and solve a huge problem, such as maintaining a con a con consistent supply of food anytime they want, then this can really influence their purchase. So you will see that it really matters in how you share the benefits of your digital product that can really help your audience identify that immediate need. So this then takes me to my next reason why your digital product may not be selling. And that's because you're not really focusing on the benefits of the digital product and how you're using those benefits in your content. So when I speak about your content, I'm speaking about the places where you're selling the product. So that might be on your website or in your emails or on the platform where you are promoting them, such as social media. Do your readers really understand what is the direct benefit that they will receive when they buy? So I want you to think about it this way. Imagine you're telling your friend about your new digital product that you've created. Instead of talking about all the technical details of what, is, what the product is made up of, Think about how it will make their life better or more enjoyable. So what does it do for the person using it, not just what it is? For example, if you're selling photography presets, don't just say it has filters. Say it makes your photos look amazing and stand out on social media. Also, you want to avoid using complicated words or jargon when describing the benefits. So instead, use words that are simple. And remember that whilst you might be very knowledgeable on your digital product, the people who you want to buy may not be. So reading all these words that they're not quite familiar with could be off-putting. And that might cause your digital product not to sell. Okay, so the fourth reason why your digital products may not be selling probably has nothing to do with whether it solves a problem or the, the content on your website or in your emails, but rather with how many people are seeing your digital products. So let me tell you a, a little bit about my story. I started my digital product business in February 2022 and by July 2022, after starting building an audience here on YouTube, I made a few sales here and there, but it was nothing really consistent. And my goal for my channel was to create several ways for my subscribers to see my digital products, but I realized that this certainly wasn't enough and it wasn't until I found other avenues of getting in front of more people, which was through collaborative ventures that I started getting daily sales of my digital products. And these were products that I had created in the first year of starting my, my business. And just by using a different marketing strategy to be able to get in front of more people, was I able to produce consistent sales. So think about how many people are actually seeing your products every day. When I started online, traffic generation was the very first thing that I learned, and that was a direct reflection on how many leads or sales I got. So which is why when I started my business, it was my number one goal to build an audience, which in turn could generate more people visiting my website, seeing my products and buying them. So ask yourself, if you're selling digital products and you're not getting sales, how many people actually know about you? Where can you go to get more and more people to know about you? 
So for example, I'm not going to give up on YouTube, which I know is a longer strategy, a long-term strategy, but I am going to supplement that with other ways of driving traffic quickly. And for me, that's through collaborative events where I can borrow other people's audiences, whether that's in Facebook groups, through joint ventures, through guest blogging, guest podcasting, influencer marketing. So, I mean, if you're someone who wants to get traffic to your digital products quickly, you can also utilize ads, but this is typically an avenue used by people who have a marketing budget and are willing to invest money into testing and building an audience, knowing that they're likely to lose money before they make a return. I mean, I previously spoke about selling digital oh, products with ads in another video, which I'll make sure to put a link in my description box below. And in my 10 day action plan, I actually uncover over 28 ways that you can start building traffic and how to promote your digital product to get digital product sales. So make sure to check the link in the description box below. And another reason why your digital products may not be selling is because there is no credibility or trust to encourage people to buy. So I want you to imagine this for a moment. Let's say you stumble upon a digital product online. It sounds great, but here's the catch. You don't really know anything about the person or brand. There is no testimonials or reviews on the website. Would you actually take out your credit card and purchase, right? Probably not. So I think a lack of credibility is like a roadblock. So that keeps potential customers from hitting that buy now button, which is why when I started selling digital products, I always, always try to find ways to get customers to send me a testimonial or review by asking for feedback and taking them into my Facebook group where I provide ongoing support to them in the hope that they will speak naturally about the wonderful experience with my digital product. So if you have testimonials, flaunt them, show them on your website. Real stories from real people using your digital products are so powerful. It's like having a bunch of friends vouching for you. And I have seen a real difference in my product sales once I started adding testimonials to my sales pages. But I know the biggest question that you might have is what if you're just getting started and the testimonials are just not coming in? So another effective way to build trust is by sharing your own story. I mean, storytelling really humanizes your brand. It makes people relate to your experiences and takes them on a journey where they can understand the challenges that you faced, the lessons you learned and how it all led to the creation of your valuable digital product. So when people connect with your story, they're more likely to trust the product you have poured your heart into and potentially buy it. You can also position yourself as an expert. I mean, people love learning and they love it even more when it's free. So just like I'm doing, provide valuable content related to your niche. For example, if your digital product is an online course about organic gardening, then you can create content about organic gardening techniques like composting, soil preparation, or how to care for your crops. I mean, sharing your knowledge not only establishes you as an authority, but it also shows your audience the value that you bring. And it's like giving your audience a taste of what you have to offer. So the more they learn from you, the more they'll want to explore your digital product. And the final reason why you not be, may not be getting digital product sales just from the experience that I've been through and also the things that I've implemented on my website is that your audience might just not know what they're getting when they purchase. So the way that you present your digital product might bring about some doubt about what exactly is the user buying, which is why you want to make sure that your product description this, that describes your product tells users exactly what they're getting when they buy. So do you have an FAQ section on your website that helps prospects overcome objections that they might have? What about the visuals for your digital products? Do they clearly represent to the user what they will be getting? I mean, you can actually take screenshots of your product. You can give sneak peeks to the website visitors, showing them what they're getting. 
I mean, one thing that I've been trying to do is add a video walkthrough of my digital product, showing the user what they will get so that they can be confident with their purchase. I mean, the way that you present your digital products definitely is key to generating more sales, compelling visuals, clear descriptions, a professional appearance are your secret weapons. So think about how you can incorporate all of this into your own digital products. Okay guys, so there you have it. My reasons as to why your digital product may not be selling and what you can do to increase your product sales. Don't forget if you have a digital product and it's not selling or you're just getting started in your digital product journey, then make sure to check out my 10 day action plan to launching and selling your own digital product, which is linked in my description box below. I hope these tips have been helpful. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.